Coming up, bring Oshkosh to you as EAA Spirit of Aviation Week kicks off. It's a mighty might trainer and it's changing the cost of advanced ratings. We go big in the tiny RV-12. Plus, stranded in a tropical paradise, AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Lightspeed Zulu 3, the most preferred, most awarded headset in general aviation. With decades of providing unsurpassed value and unsurpassed functionality, pilots all over the world love flying with Zulu 3. Try Zulu 3 today, risk-free, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Lightspeed, fly with Zulu. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Alyssa Cobb. Welcome to AOPA Live This Week, and this week, and every week thereafter, Alyssa will be joining us from her new home in Ohio. Alyssa has moved, but we're delighted that because of modern technology, she'll continue as our Senior Director of eMedia and Online Managing Editor, and of course, your co-host of AOPA Live This Week. So Alyssa, how's the change? Well, you know, it's been great time. We've been here since April, actually. And uh, while I miss being at AOPA headquarters in Frederick, Maryland, with uh, all of you coworkers, um, I love the aviation community in Ohio. I've flown a lot here, and everyone's so welcoming. And I already have the inside scoop on some grass strips <laughs> to visit soon. That's very important. Yeah, well, we miss having you around the office. Not that very many of us are around the office much these days, but when we right. get back to the office, we'll ha miss having you here, but it's it's great that you're able to continue uh, with us. And uh, so yes. good luck there in the Buckeye State. Come see us often. Yes, well, we'll do. <laughs> there's another change for all of us. This year may not include a trip to Oshkosh, but you can bring AirVenture home to you. EA's Spirit of Aviation Week kicks off on July 21st, AOPA Live's Paul Harrop tells us it's not the same, but now well, it comes close. That's the on base. I need to turn direct towards the pink dot. Turn towards the pink dot now, yellow dot, third to land. The Cessna over We may not be flying the Fisk arrival. There's no Warbird alarm clock at 0600. But EAA's Kyle Ludwig says the spirit of Aviation Week is virtually the same thing. We understand that AirVenture and Oshkosh are irreplaceable in somebody's summer and somebody's life, but we're hoping that we can continue to give great educational type content uh, and experiential type content to our EAA members, AOPA members, and other aviation constituents out there. The week is packed with nearly everything you'd expect in person. Folks can expect everything from pilot proficiency type content that they've known to come uh, and enjoy at Oshkosh and the Pilot Proficiency Center. Uh, workshops covering all sorts of home building and uh, vintage restoration projects. They can hear from the past commander of the Blue Angels, Eric Popeye Doyle, hear from current Thunderbird pilots, other air show performers, uh, folks from the Warbird side, historical videos from EAA and Air Ventures past, and a lot more. There's no Artie and Ed's, Friar Tucks, or Beckett's, but the rest of the names you know are all lined up. Still see your favorite aviation names, performers, um, and uh, educational type content, but just on your own time. You know, you won't be able to enjoy your campsite uh, or your favorite Wisconsin beer, maybe, uh, but we hope that you can still enjoy the content we put together that, that maybe reminisces you uh, back to Oshkosh's past. So put a nice green dot on your couch, rock your wings, and clear yourself to land, grab the computer, and you might just find that not all of life's treasures are only in Wisconsin. In my own little Oshkosh, Paul here up AOPA Live. And you might see a familiar face during the Spirit of Aviation Week. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop chats with the EAA's Steph Strickland about his flight training journey. And that's Friday, July 24th, 1 p.m. Central. You can find that and all the other content at EAA eaatogether.org. And next week on the program, we'll give you a look back at some of the best stories from AOPA Live at AirVenture. We'll bring you old favorites to remember the good times from years past. We're digging deep in the archive to find memorable moments. It'll be hosted by the producers of AOPA Live this week with inside tips and memories about the stories. Look for that and any news of the week on next week's program. And yet another aviation event canceled this year. Greenville, Maine draws scores of seaplanes every September to the International Seaplane Fly-In, but not this year. The 47th gathering will have to wait until 2021. The International Seaplane Fly-In Association said there are just too many variables to hold the event this year. Well, flying a seaplane can be one of the most fun aviation experiences, and I can attest to that. 
but it also comes with extra challenges and risk management. The latest Air Safety Institute accident case study takes a look at a seaplane flight gone wrong. The video details a Lake, lake Renegade accident at the Air Venture seaplane base. The amphib crashed during a rough water takeoff, and the pilot chose to proceed even after repeated warnings from other pilots that it was a dangerous decision. The combination of mistakes proved fatal. Operating in rough water, in a tailwind, without flaps, heavy weight, and executing poor rough water takeoff technique left almost no other outcome but disaster. The end result was that a high-time pilot and a CFI were involved in a disaster that took the pilot's own life, plus the life of a passenger who couldn't fully appreciate the risk they took on her behalf. It's a tragic reminder of the trust passengers place in their pilots and can serve as somber reinforcement of our duty to uphold that trust. You can find the full video on the Air Safety Institute YouTube channel. Really sad case. I remember being at AirVenture when that happened and it kind of put a pall on the entire show. But the Air Safety Institute does a great job of bringing stories like that to life. And the Air Safety Institute and AOPA Media just won several national awards for content like that. The Excel Awards honor excellence in association media and publishing. ASI won bronze awards for the Weather or Not Thunderstorm Challenge online course, Real Pilot Story Powerless Over Paris video, and the EFERC Refresher course. AOPA Media, meanwhile, took gold for the Hangar Talk podcast and for feature article design for an article called Eating Local in Flight Training Magazine. We also won a bronze for a video played here on AOPA Live called Flying the American Dream. So, Alyssa, we create a lot of great content here at AOPA. I'm so proud yeah. of the team who puts all that together and makes it happen and, uh, and, and really happy that people enjoy it. Yes, and, and, you know, what a way to celebrate all the hard work that goes into everything the Media and Air Safety Institute teams uh, do. Yeah, they do, a yeah. Great, they do a great job, and it's nice to get the recognition not only from pilots but also from the association community. Exactly. Well, free gas for three years? That's what you'll get if you buy a Piper M350 before September 30th. Along with the fuel, Piper will also cover maintenance, training, inspections, and other consumables. The M350 is a pressurized six-seat single-engine piston airplane. Now, the base price for the M350 is just under $1.2 million. You can find out more about what Piper is calling the Fly Free for Three promotion on the Piper website. And Cessna is looking for your help to pick paint schemes for the 2021 piston models. On the Cessna website, you can see and vote for your favorite scheme for next year's Skyhawk, Skylane, and Turbo Stationaire HD. The winning design will be one of the official 2021 paint schemes. Sport airplane company Sonics is bringing back a classic design. The company announced that it will offer plans and parts for the Sonarai. The Sonarai family of airplanes started it all for Sonic's founder, John Monette. The Sonarai was one of his first designs and flew for the first time in 1971. Thousands of Sonarai have been built over the years, but the design was not offered by Sonic's until now. The airplane is affordable with an estimated build cost of around $22,000. Meanwhile, agricultural airplane manufacturer Rush Aircraft has a new windshield for their airplanes, and that's a big deal in the ag world. The Storm Shield windshield offers added protection from bird and drone strikes, and that's important for ag airplanes. The new windshield will be standard on all new Thrush aircraft and available as a retrofit for all current models. Garmin's nifty little GI-275 has just learned a new trick. The electronic flight instrument fits in a standard instrument panel hole and can function as an attitude indicator, horizontal situation indicator, and display all kinds of flight data. Now it can drive various autopilots. It can be configured as an HSI to work with old Century 2 and 3 autopilots. It also works with Garmin's GFC 500 autopilot. And if you have two GI 275s in the panel, both can be coupled for the autopilot for redundancy. Now, speaking of the GFC 500, Garmin has added more aircraft to the approved list, including Cessna 210 models and more Bonanza models. And the avionics in the AOPA sweepstakes RV-10 have a lot of tricks. 
Editor-at-large Dave Hirschman shows them off in a recent flight on a hard IFR day in Frederick, Maryland. In the video, Dave attempts multiple ILS approaches to minimums before finally making it into Frederick. The flight demonstrates the capability of the avionics from Avidyne and Advanced Flight Systems. You can find the video on the AOPA Live YouTube channel. Hey, and speaking of RVs, the Light Sport RV12 is making waves in the flight training market. Dave Hirschman shows us why the 21st century RV12 is an attractive alternative to the 20th century Pipers and Cessnas that dominate flight training. The RV-12 is an easy airplane to underestimate. It's so small, so toy-like, so comical, it looks like it should carry a Fisher Price label. But take a closer look and you'll see that the RV-12 is one of the best tools ever for turning pedestrians into pilots. It's honestly a fun airplane to instruct in. It, uh, it makes it really, really easy on both the student and the instructor. There's, Vans has done everything they can to really simplify the systems and the operation and the handling of the aircraft, and it really makes it a lot of fun. And recent FAA rule changes have vastly expanded the RV-12's training role to include private pilot and advanced ratings. Our RV-12s are actually the only technically advanced aircraft in our fleet uh, that meet the definitions for commercial pilot training. So we have trained and certified a commercial pilot who did their check ride in our RV-12s. <laughs> so yeah, we do sport, private, and commercial training in them. The RV-12 thrives in these demanding roles for good reasons. In the flight school environment, it's very cost efficient. It you know, burns only four gallons an hour, which is great compared to most of the other planes we fly. And it has been really easy for students to learn how to land. And so I feel like they can rent the airplane for less money an hour, and then they're getting, their, they're getting to solo in fewer hours. From a student's point of view, the RV-12s are modern, surprisingly roomy, thoroughly enjoyable to fly, and they allow students to make rapid progress. I love the view. I love having low wings. I think my first flight experience was in a 172, and that felt claustrophobic to me versus this actually doesn't. Sure, the RV-12 is a small airplane, but its outsized role in a broad range of flight training is sure to benefit student pilots and flight schools for many years to come. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. You can read more about the RV-12 in the August issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. So Alyssa, as you know, that red and white RV-12 uh, was an airplane that I owned for about 18 months. It was on leaseback with Brenda Tibbs, who you saw in the video there. And I gotta mm -hmm. say, it was so much fun to fly. It is just a really neat little airplane. Um, and it did very well at the flight school, it continues to do well there as the new owners uh, kept it on leaseback. So I'm great, great to see it out on the field and flying frequently from here at Frederick, teaching a whole new generation of pilots to fly. That's right, I thought that looked like you and your daughter flying yeah. there at the beginning. And you, you all flew it quite a bit, I understand. Yeah, we did, we had a lot of fun in that thing. And, uh, and it's, like I said, it's great to see it out there. And it's, it was the first uh, factory built SLSA RV-12 on the field. Now there's uh, at least three, and I think there's going to about to be a fourth one. So it's it's uh, really kind of taken over the training fleet here in Frederick. Yeah, started a trend. Yep. Well, coming up, we talked to pilot and worldwide adventurer Kelly Edwards. And stranded in an island paradise, we'll be right back. Your plane is a valuable tool. With the Genesis Aerosystems S-Tech 3100 Digital Autopilot, you can rest assured you will arrive safely to your destination. The 3100 is the industry's most advanced autopilot for single and twin engine aircraft, providing exceptional workload reduction, safety enhancing capabilities, such as straight and level load and speed protection. To learn more, visit our website today. Welcome back, a first for the Navy. Lieutenant J.G. Madeline Swagel became the U.S. Navy's first known black female tactical jet pilot. She just finished her tactical training with the VT-21 Red Hawks at Naval Air Station in Kingsville in Texas. Swagel will get her wings of gold later this month, opening opportunities for her to fly Navy fighter jets like the F-18 and F-35. Congratulations, Madeline. Well, she's an adventure traveler, scuba diver, television host, journalist, and pilot. Kelly Edwards is the guest on our latest Pilot Lounge episode where she talks about how she got into aviation, 
her flying adventures, and how she is working to make aviation more visible and open to everyone. And so what I've chosen to do with my platform is two things. To show the aviation community that, yeah, I can fly birds too. I can fly about three or four different types of planes. I have two ratings, you know? I also wanna show my community that if aviation is something that you're interested in, let me share the history with you before today that there have been pilots out there risking their life to learn how to fly a plane. And so I feel like it's been a dual purpose for me in this realm and it's been very successful. You know, I'm an advocate for my community, for my community. I'm an advocate for women. And it's very important that we show up in both of those spaces in aviation. You can find the full video on the AOPA Live YouTube channel and on AOPA's social media channels. Well, a trailblazer for women in aviation has flown west. Emily Howe Warner, the first female airline pilot in the U.S., died in early July. She fought through many challenges to get her airline job. Emily tried for years and was only hired by Frontier Airlines after passing a grueling simulator test not required by her male colleague. After being hired as first officer, Emily went on to be the first female airline captain. She was also the first female designated pilot examiner. Emily was 80 years old. When we first launched our new online flight planner in April, some of you were a little skeptical. Yes, iFlight Planner for AOPA was a little different from the old one, but it also did some new things and many of you grew to like it. But many of you thought it could do some things better and you told us and we listened. And Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have a live webinar to show the changes and improvements. A big one a lot of you asked for was the ability to easily send a flight plan from our online flight planner to your favorite EFB. Well, now it's there. You can watch the live stream webinar on YouTube. And our You Can Fly team has a webinar series out called Don't Get Rusty. It was started during the lockdown period of the coronavirus pandemic as many of us were not able to fly much. The goal is to give an entertaining and informative presentation to help you keep your flying skills sharp, even if you can't get in the airplane. We have a dozen episodes up so far on a range of topics from ATC communications to planning long VFR cross countries. You can find the whole series on the AOPA Live YouTube playlist called Don't Get Rusty Webinars. If you're going to wind up stuck somewhere, how about someplace tropical? Luke Weinstein sent us these clips of flying around Vieques Island, Puerto Rico. He and his Aviat Husky wound up stranded there for a while due to the COVID-19 airspace shutdowns on the way back home. If you have video from a recent flight you'd like to share with us, we'd love to see it. You can upload it to us via the URL on your screen. 
and you don't have to go to the trouble of getting stranded to send something in. We're happy to look at any of your flights, and we'll look forward to it. Hey, that's our show for the week. Thanks for being a part of it. If you have comments, the email address is on your screen. Alyssa? That's right. Remember to tune in next week we'll ha where we'll have the best of Oshkosh special. Also look for more great content on AOPA's social media pages. We'll see you next week. My name is Terry Carbonell. I live in the Florida Keys on a private airstrip called Tavernero. What I fly is a uh, 182RG. Wild Mama is her name, 614 Whiskey Mike. You know, Sirius XM is just the best product out there. I fly in the mountains a lot and ADS-B is a line of sight. You can't get ADS-B, you have big gaps in the mountains and that's, gosh, when would you want to have good weather is in the mountains. I like to fly low. I've flown across the United States at 1,000 feet AGL because it's, it's all about scenery. You can't always get ADS-B when you're at 1,000 feet, but I always have Sirius XM weather and radio. Sirius XM radio is on 24-7 when I'm in the plane. Sirius XM weather just keeps you out of trouble. It's certainly avoiding bad memories. It's nothing like having reliable weather service in the cockpit. <laughs>